Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Muhammad's Boom Boom Room, where all of my guests either agree with me completely or they go boom. I am your host, the Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon me. And with me now is one of history's most devout Muslims, Socrates. Socrates, thank you for joining me. Oh, I'm not a Muslim. Wait, I. I feel I'm getting deja vu. I don't know what that is, but it sounds haram. More pagan philosophy. Have, have we done this before? Have we already had a discussion? We've had many discussions. Perhaps, probably, you're just confusing me with one of the most smartest geniuses you've ever met. Because you can sense my smartness. You're an intelligent man, then. Yes, I was a child progeny. Well, I've been going through your book, and I'm a little confused about your view of creation. See, I, I feel like we've already done this. Please, continue. According to chapter 2, verse 29 of the Quran, Allah created the earth, and after that, he turned his attention toward heaven and created the seven heavens. Alhamdulillah. As Ibn Kathir has said, a builder builds the foundation first, then the roof. So Allah created the earth first, then the heavens. This shows the wisdom of Allah. And yet, in chapter 79, verses 27 to 33 of the Quran, Allah says that he created the heavens first, then he created the earth. Alhamdulillah! This demonstrates the power of Allah. Only the most powerful of builders can build the roof first and only later build the foundations. So, one passage shows the wisdom of Allah in creating the earth first, then the heavens, and another passage shows the power of Allah in creating the heavens first, then the earth. Alhamdulillah! One of history's greatest philosophers now understands the majesty of the great God, Allah. Pump your brakes there, Muhammad. I really want to explain contradictions to you, but one, I feel like I already have, and two, how can you claim to be a prophet when you keep contradicting yourself like this? I am a prophet. You can even ask the people of the book who read about me in their scriptures, the Torah and the Gospel. So, you're appealing to the Torah and the Gospel for support? Peace be upon me. Allah declares that he revealed the Torah and the Gospel, and he also declares that no one can change his words. This means that the Torah and the Gospel are reliable, perfect scriptures that affirm I am a true prophet of the great God, Allah. How do you not know that the Torah and the Gospel call you a false prophet? The central message of the Gospel is that Jesus is the divine Son of God, who died on the cross for sins and rose from the dead. The Gospel also says that false prophets are going to come and that they're going to try to corrupt that message. So what does that make you? A true prophet of the great God, Allah! Do you even hear yourself? Do you have any idea how stupid you sound to anyone with a drop of consistency coursing through his veins? You tell me to go to the Jews and Christians because they'll agree with you, but they don't agree with you. You tell me to go to the Torah and the Gospel because they'll confirm that you're a prophet, but the Torah and the Gospel call you a false prophet. Hello, Zakir Naik. It's me again. This Kafir is asking me why I appeal to the Torah and the Gospel for confirmation when the Torah and the Gospel call me a false prophet. Brother makes a good point. Mm -hmm. Christians quoted the Bible. Mm -hmm. And many different Bibles. Mm -hmm. 14 different Bibles. And the candle of Nikia. Thank you. You can't trust the Jews and the Christians. Their scriptures have been corrupted. So, the Torah and the Gospel were revealed by Allah. No one can change the words of Allah, but the Torah and the Gospel have been changed. Peace be upon me.
Allah's words then are both incapable of being changed and entirely changeable? Peace be upon me. I'm going to be frank with you, Muhammad, because I think that your usual listeners are so terrified of having their heads chopped off that they mindlessly agree with anything you say, no matter how stupid it happens to be. A drugged monkey could outwit you. I've had more intelligent conversations with an olive tree. You're so stupid that a lobotomy might actually make you smarter. If someone invited you to the Super Bowl, you'd probably bring a spoon. You're the sort of person who would want to study for a blood test even though you can't read. You probably think that seaweed is something that fish smoke. Brain-eating zombies would walk right past you. Seriously, you make the entire Kardashian family look like the final contestants on Jeopardy's Tournament of Champions. So you're a fan of Jeopardy? Oh no. The final Jeopardy answer is, this is what Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon me, says to Socrates. My response, please don't. Wait for it. What is Allahu Akbar? <laughs>